Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Star Wars Episode 2 Attack of the Clones 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review. Today we're taking a look at the clone pilot. Now I got mine from toyswonderland.com. I have popped the link to their site in the description below. They have PN4 and a reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button, so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, for the slip cover at least, it's pretty simple. An image of the clone pilot front and center, Star Wars in metallic foil, clone pilot, and in the corner, 20th anniversary of Attack of the Clones. Interestingly enough though, look at that, they've corrected his mouth lines. Or have they? What the hell do I mean by that? Well, they only corrected the mouth lines on the artwork on the box. The figure himself, they're still far too thick, but we'll get into that. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. On the side of the box, two-tone, a grey section and a black one. Then Star Wars, Clone Pilot. Around the back, this is riveting. Clone Pilot once again, warnings and legal info. But underneath this slipcover, oh, this is where the fun begins. That's more like it, that's some proper artwork Hot Toys. Don't do the slip covers, just display it like this in the store. This is going to stand out way more than just that plain ass image on the front of the slip cover. We do have another image of the clone pilot though, an open window showcasing him inside. A 20th anniversary episode two Attack of the Clones holographic sticker and I love that green, so Kenner. Plus, down below, Star Wars Attack of the Clones. You can also flip up the top cover just to get a better look at the clone pilot inside. I'm pretty sure this is Geonosis and then again another image of the clone pilot, but why is he so filthy? Because this was the first time we saw the clone pilots. This is an episode two figure technically. And these guys are pilots. Look, it says so in the name. They should be in the cockpits of the gunships. This guy should be pristine, but... We'll discuss the weathering later on. In fact, we've got a few things to discuss later on. There is also a read-up. Feel free to pause to read. Then on the back of the box, Star Wars Attack of the Clones, but an image of the clone pilot that's very specifically not from Episode 2. He's wearing the Phase 1.5 helmet. Then down below, all of the same warnings and legal info that we saw on the back of the slipcover just a second ago. I really don't want to make it sound like I'm complaining too much because I don't mean to. I'm still super excited to have a Hot Toys clone pilot. And yes, I did order two of these. One to display as Phase 1 and the other to display as Clone Wars. First in-hand impressions? Well, it's a Hot Toys clone trooper. What we are going to do now though is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look and everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first, and we have seen this base so many times with so many Star Wars figures. It's the Republic or Imperial style flooring. It can really be whatever you want it to be. If this is a command platform on Geonosis, so be it. If this is the inside of a gunship, the little cargo area in the back, yeah, that works too. It's done in this kind of warmish gray, and there is some red dry brushing around the edges. It is subtle, but it's there. Then around the front, Star Wars and Clone Pilot on an etched nameplate. Up top, an adjustable crotch grabber. I did allude to this earlier, but we get two different styles of Clone Trooper helmets, the Phase 1 and the Phase 1.5, or the Clone Wars helmet. I will save my in-depth analysis for when we pop these on the body, because talking about them separately is really boring. But I do want to make mention of the fact that the hoses, they're attached in two completely different ways. For the Hawk style helmet, it's around the front, and yes, you can detach them, they're not glued in. And around the back, for the Phase 1, they simply plug up the top there. So, you've got options. Whether you prefer this style or the Hawk style, you can go either way. Same thing with blasters, options. We have the DC-15 carbine, and you can rotate this piece down, but not far enough back for it to actually be a stock. Whoopsie hot toys, they should have made that a little bit wider so this could have fit through, but it can't. It's painted in gunmetal and there is so much silver dry brushing. It looks very metallic, but it's made of plastic. The iron sights are nice and rubbery, so no worries when it comes to breakage. We also have some pops of copper, just to contrast with the overall gunmetal finish. Then one DC-17 blaster pistol, not two. 
that's reserved for the captains and the ARC troopers, I guess. It is painted in the same way as the carbine. Gunmetal with silver dry brushing. Correct me if I'm wrong down below, I absolutely could be. I'm 99% sure this is the first time we've received these macro binoculars. I love them. No two ways about it. They're painted beautifully. This dark maroon red and the cream, the off-white. There's some dirt and grime on the surface, washes in the crevices, and some pops of colour around the front. Then around the back, the piece he'd look through is done in translucent green plastic. There's also a party piece though. You can move this piece down to activate the zoom function. Of course, it doesn't move anything inside, it doesn't actually zoom. However, if you wanted to make it look like it was, you can. These we have seen before. Droid poppers or thermal detonators. One that's just a half detonator, so perhaps you can pop this on the display base or a droid so it looks like it's attached to them. And one that's a full thermal detonator. The sculpt is sharp. They're painted in this kind of light silver gunmetal, not super dark like the blasters. And there is red for what would normally be the LED activation. So when you flip this piece back, that little doohickey would flash until it blows up. Then it wouldn't be flashing anymore. And lastly, an array of hands. Not a full array though. For some reason, this time we're missing the close fist. We got one with the red clone. Now they've decreased it once again to none. We do get some trigger finger hands, one splayed out finger hand, a pointing gesture hand, and two gripping hands to either hold the thermal detonators, the macro binocular, or the underside of the DC-15 carbine. Now the trigger finger hands, they look good. There's wrinkling and some stitch lines sculpted in, painted in black, of course. Then for the palm armor, nice and dirty and grimy. One thing to note though is it is very difficult to get the weapons into these hands. The fingers are super rigid and the handles, they're way too big and thick and chonky, so trying to wedge these in is an absolute chore. A word of warning, a little bit of advice if you will, heat up the hands first and save yourself the hassle. Now even though Hot Toys did remove the closed fist hands this time, they have newly sculpted the open palm hands, so maybe that's why they did, because they needed a little budget to move this finger down. As you can see, this hand is the one that's come with all of the other clones, this is the new one. This finger is curled around a little bit tighter, and the other finger positions also different. In fact, the entire sculpt with the wrinkles, very different. And that's for multiple reasons. Number one, to hold the macro binoculars but number two, to hold the thermal detonator. That finger now comes underneath and cups the bottom. So it's a much more secure grip than trying to use those other hands. What we are going to do now though, is get the clone pilot himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. If you'd told me a couple of years ago before Hot Toys kickstarted their clone making machine that I'd be standing here reviewing a Hot Toys clone pilot, I would have said, nah, -uh, no way, you are dreaming, never gonna happen. But it did happen, and this guy, he's really good. That's to be expected though, Hot Toys, they are expert cloners at this point, even maybe better than the Kaminoans. They've gotten the body down to a science, great proportions, he fills out the suit of armour while looking realistic at the same time, which, by the way, is no easy feat, because if the body was too big and bulky, just like a normal 1-6 scale body, then you popped all the armour on top of it, it would look very goofy, like some of the old school sideshow clones did. But they've perfected it. The bodysuit, full fabric, great for posing. Then the armor on top of that, well, it's a lot dirtier than we've ever seen from other Hot Toys clones. I'm starting to be won over by that. And the pops of color from the various little markings and that yellow stripe. Oh yes, this guy's absolutely going to stand out for all the right reasons. Up close and personal, kicking things off with the Phase 1 helmet. We will install the Phase 1.5 or Clone Wars helmet in just a second, cause I'm pretty curious to see what that one looks like on the body and also which one I prefer. Now the Phase 1, it's speaking my language. I love the glossy T-visor. Plus it is also a separate piece of plastic, so it's not just painted in glossy black, it's actually got some depth to it. The edges, they're super sharp. 
Unfortunately though, the mouth is still incorrect. I mean, compared to this one, this one is a little bit more obviously incorrect because they're super thick black lines, but they've swapped it out for super thick gray lines. These should be way thinner. Will Hot Toys correct that in the future? Maybe, but I kind of hope they don't at this point, because if you think about it, they've got it wrong so many times. So if they do fix it suddenly, randomly with a new clone, then it won't match all of the existing clones already in our collection. So they've got it wrong so many times, they're in a bit of a pickle. Do weigh in down below, would you prefer them to fix it and then kind of have our other clones look weird? Or just keep going the way they are. You also have the little black rectangle around the front, some grills with dirt and grime in the surface, and oh, by the way, this entire clone trooper is filthy. There's dirt and grime everywhere. The pop of yellow up the top, very striking, and you do have two Republic cogs as well. There are also some grey details, and this sculpt is all new. They haven't borrowed anything from this clone trooper helmet. Even the shape of this rectangle is completely different. Now the chest box with the rubbery hoses, very rubbery, and the chest box itself is pegged in position. Does that affect articulation? Well, we will have to find out a little bit later on. But there are two pegs, so it is nice and secure. We do have some details printed on the surface, and it's painted really well, but is it just me? Or does that kind of look like an X-Men logo? Oh, it's definitely there. I mean, you can see it as plain as day, even on this chest box, which is identical to the Phase 1 version. Now, this helmet is very unique. It's a very striking design. He kind of has the Phase 2 visor with some added little rectangles on the side. They love their rectangles on Clone Trooper helmets, it seems. And the front section comes down to a kind of snoot piece. Now, the helmet itself is also significantly wider. We've got these two sections on the side and this blast shield up top. Then around the back, that looks like Phase 2. But don't forget, the Phase 2 clone pilot is completely different once again. He's wearing the grey jumpsuit, and we first saw them in Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. This one is more Clone Wars inspired. Now we do have some design callbacks to the Phase 1, the yellow, but it's a little bit darker over here, and also the Republic Cogs. Which one will I be going with in my collection now that I've seen them both on the body? I'm leaning towards Phase 1. It's not to say that I don't like the Hawk style helmet, which will make for some really cool customs, I do like it, but the Phase 1 version it's my favourite, it's just my personal preference. Around the back he has the traditional clone style backplate, but this time it's painted a little bit differently. The circles, they're painted in grey, and the washers, they are so much heavier. Plus the armour, it's a shade darker, and there is so much more dirt and grime pretty much everywhere. We have this brown wash, which is speckled on the surface, and multiple sections that have some very heavy soiling. Now, it also has this matte finish. I would have digged a glossy finish for the pilots, but they stuck with matte, which matches the rest of the clones they've already made. So it just makes sense. Around the front, the chest plate looks the same as the other clones, but... Don't forget, it's got those little pegs that plug into the chest box, so at the very least, the front portion of this armour would have had to have been newly sculpted. But you wouldn't be able to tell because it looks the exact same. The lines are very sharp, it's not too big, and it's not too bulky. Plus, it's a separate piece to the abdomen armour, and the belt, and the crotch plate, so all of this is movable and adjustable. The belt itself is cast in rubbery plastic, and the colour match between the hard plastic and the rubber is good. It doesn't look out of place. The shoulder pads are shoulder padded on the underside. I am so sorry. And we do have some elastic straps. Once again, it's adjustable. In fact, everything is. We can move these pieces up and down. The bicep armor, it's all really nice and flexible. Now, we do also have the traditional ribbed fabric bodysuit, so no worries when it comes to posing. It's all stretchy fabric. It's worth noting though that some of these pieces are hard plastic, whereas other ones, like I said with the flexibility, are made out of rubber. And this piece is actually a mix of both. Around the back it's more of a hard plastic, and this strap is more rubbery. Coming down to his legs, 
can see more of that ribbed fabric bodysuit poking through. His thigh armor can be moved around, and it comes to a point. Plus, I love this really sharp line down the front. I've mentioned it in other Clone Trooper reviews. It's worth noting once again, when they put the wash over the top, that super sharp sculpted in line picks it up beautifully. Coming down to the feet, split cut boot design. Now unfortunately this does come down to a sharp point and it kind of pushes the foot forward. So when it comes to standing this guy and subsequently all the other clones, it can be a touch challenging. I would suggest if you find the foot sitting forward like this, push it up, angle it back and try and push it as far back as you possibly can. So that means it's a little bit more centered and fingers crossed you should be able to balance him a touch more easily. For those wondering, he does have some fully sculpted tread underneath his boots, done in grey, and there is some printed dirt and grime on the surface. Not painted, you heard that right, all of these splotches, they're printed. That's how they can be so uniform between every figure in the various batches. Compared to the regular clone, the grey is a little bit more yellowish in tone as opposed to blue, and the weathering for the red clone simply wasn't there. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, right this very moment, we don't have a ton of episode 2 figures to compare this guy to, not that makes sense at least. We will eventually have Mace Windu, and Anakin, and Padme, and the Geonosis battle droids, and the super battle droids, and maybe, just maybe, a mullet Obi-Wan, make it happen Hot Toys. For now though, he's a regular Phase 1 clone, also from episode 2. He's brighter in terms of the white, he's also less filthy, and the helmet design completely different. But the body is the same, the undersuit is the same, and most of the armor sculpt, you guessed it, also the same. Next up, Episode 2 Yoda. This makes sense, and I bet some of you all were commenting down below, Justin, Justin, what about Yoda? Well, here he is. He's significantly shorter than the clone, as he should be. Going over articulation... Initially, I was worried. I thought 100% these hoses, they're getting in the way, no question. But nah, it's not really a thing. They're super flexible, so they get out of the way, no problem whatsoever. Starting off with the helmet, it's on an articulated neck with a ball joint down the bottom and a double ball peg up on top. Combined, looking forward to there, going up to there, swivel and pivot side to side. The arms will go up to there and the shoulder pad tucks up underneath the torso armor, going forward and back on soft ratchets, butterfly joint at the shoulder, it hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow on soft ratchets, but there is some collision, so you only really get just past 90. Hinge and swivel for the wrist peg. The torso will crunch forward and back. There is some separation of the armor, but you can always move the belt down to hide that gap. Swivel and pivot side to side. The legs will go forward to there on ratchets, but rotate the thigh armor. They'll go up even higher. Going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh. Double bend at the knee once again on ratchets and going just past 90. Then a double ball peg for the ankle, good for forward and back, swivel, and ankle rocker. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things. Now don't get me wrong, I love weathering, you all know I do. More detail is always better than less, but this guy's a pilot, and by definition he's supposed to be piloting the gunship, so he shouldn't be as dirty as he is, at least in my opinion. Compared to the standard reg clone, also from episode 2, who is actually supposed to be on the battlefield, this guy is significantly cleaner, and to me, it doesn't really make a ton of sense. The second annoying thing is, it seems every time we get a new clone trooper, we get less and less hands. This time, we don't even get the closed fists, we get trigger finger hands, one open palm hand, one pointing hand, and just the regular gripping hands. Hot Toys, this is a trend that I absolutely want to see gone. Give us more hands, not less. The third annoying thing is the only thing stopping you from taking off the clone pilot helmet, removing this chest box, popping on a regular phase 2 or phase 1 helmet, and turning this guy into a veteran clone trooper. It's these pegs right here. They could have absolutely gone with magnets for this chest box, so you could simply pop it in position and it would have been less restrictive for articulation. 
But they didn't. They went with pigs. That doesn't stop you from going the other way, though. The Phase 1.5 clone pilot helmet on the regular clone trooper body, who is significantly cleaner. So if you have a bunch of just regular clones floating around and you want to mix it up, pop a pilot helmet on, you can. It fits. It's the same exact connector. Now, this chest box doesn't actually attach to anything. It's a non-issue. These hoses, they're pre-sculpted, so it kind of just sits in position. The second cool thing is that we actually get the Phase 1.5 helmet, because if you think about it, they didn't really need to include it, because the only time we ever saw this was in the Clone Wars. So, to be accurate to Episode 2, this should have been the only one they included. I'm happy they didn't though, I love this design. The third cool thing is the unique accessories. Two thermal detonators or droid poppers and a pair of macro binoculars. So now we can give these to the other clone troopers already in our collection. And you know, spice things up a little. For a bonus cool thing and no, it's not because I forgot to film this and then had to go back and film this later, it's the instruction manual. On the back side of the instructions, there is a stunning piece of artwork for an Episode 2 poster. We've got the Republic Cog in the background, Anakin, who Hot Toys is making, Mace Windu, also making. Down below, they've already made Yoda and a bunch of clones, but hang on a second. Episode 2 Obi-Wan featured very prominently, Hot Toys. Are you just teasing us, or...? Are you actually going to make this guy? Wrapping up on the Hot Toys clone pilot. Seriously, pinch me. I can't believe this is a thing that Hot Toys made. Yes, a Captain Fordo. Yes, clone trooper lieutenants and commanders and captains and sergeants. A clone pilot? Really? I mean, they're not going to make a gunship. At least, I hope they're not, because where is this guy supposed to go? They didn't care, and I don't either. I'm just so happy I have this guy. Another different clone to add to the display. It's just plain basic white clones, they're cool, but having something unique that still fits the theme of episode 2, that's where I get really interested, and this guy, he makes me so very happy. Plus they included the Clone Wars helmet, so if you don't like episode 2, I know a lot of you don't, Pop this guy with your Clone Wars collection. That hawk style helmet opens up a ton of possibilities for display and for customs. Then we get to accessories. You get the droid popper grenades, you get the macro binoculars, the DC-17 blaster pistol, and the blaster carbine. So if you want to accessory share, get this guy, pop his hawk helmet on a regular, just clean clone trooper, and give him the macro binoculars, you can. So many more possibilities, and that's why this guy... I think he's a must-have. If you're putting together a Clone Wars display, you like clone troopers, and you're also putting together an Episode 2 display, and you're sitting here thinking, ooh, do I need him? I think you do, and hopefully I've explained well enough as to my reasoning why. Now, I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They do have pay in four and a reward system. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button, if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next video.